Good evening. My story highlights three holidays. Can everybody hear me all right? Yeah. We're good? Okay. Uh, Christmas, Thanksgiving, and Easter. And I also thought that I would highlight three qualities that I think are really important to keep your well-being through the holidays as well as to keep your well-being through life. I hail from a very large family. I'm number 10 of 14 children. And my family lived in Westport, New York on the western shores of Lake Champlain. So I had very different experiences from a lot of people during the holidays. I recall Christmas morning, the living room would be packed with presents, just jam-packed with presents. So when all 16 of us, myself, 13 siblings, and two parents, were all accounted for, the mayhem began. I like to call it comfortable chaos, because the gifts flew, the paper ripped, and the pets hid. Seriously. It was, it was something else. Thanksgiving for us was a time to remember those in our family who are no longer with us. We remembered my grandparents. We remembered my sister who took her own life, my eldest sister. And we remembered my eldest brother who succumbed to hepatitis C. So those are years that we always look back on and we have great memories from and we've all learned a lot from. <clears throat> Moving forward, the one thing that I think was the most difficult for my husband to come to terms with were meal times in the Lopez house. So he would always ask me, what time is dinner? And I'd say, well, sometime between noon and five o'clock. <laughs> so we all knew to stay close to the kitchen when the turkey was in the oven. Well, he would inevitably show up at four o'clock and miss dinner. And um, he really didn't understand the whole rule of first come, first serve, because <laughs> he didn't come from a large family. He had one twin brother, who's back here, and a sister. So his experience was very different. Their Christmas tradition was to have a gift exchange. So each person was selected another person. You bought one gift. And on Christmas morning, everybody watched as one person at a time opened that gift. <laughs> well, I must say, I quickly learned the value of gift cards. Because you could skip the angst of shopping, skip the disappointment of receiving, but, you know, it did somewhat mute the anticipation. Another custom in the uh, holiday was the Yankee Swap. How many here have done a Yankee Swap? Oh, so you know the rules then. So there is a price limit on the gift that you purchase for the Yankee Swap. And this was the first rule that was often broken. Because inevitably somebody would buy a gift that was more costly, or they'd throw in a homemade gift that had a lot higher value. So with a gift swap, the rules go that everybody gets a number that they pick out of a hat, it's random, and the limit, or actually each gift can be stolen twice. So number one is the golden number, they go to the tree first, they pick a gift. Number one also, after everything's said and done, gets to go back and pick the last gift. So I quickly learned the scheming methods of, of Yankee swaps. As the first and second gifts were opened, you could hear couples whispering to one another, Honey, I'll steal that gift from you after you steal it from somebody else. It's been stolen twice. It's ours, right? <laughs> so competition was a really great quality in order to get that gift that you coveted. However, I think much more important qualities were gratitude and forgiveness. The first year that my family, my nuclear family, decided to travel for the holidays was at Easter time. We uh, planned a trip to North Carolina to the Outer Banks. My daughter, who was seven at the time, was having an absolute fit that the Easter Bunny wouldn't be able to find us. So she went on and on and on about this until finally, in my frustration, I said to her, Sage, there is no Easter Bunny. And by the way, there's no Santa Claus either. <laughs> she has since forgiven me for that admission. She still teases me about it. And I wish I could say that was my only bad mom moment. <laughs> the first year my nuclear family was not together for Christmas was when my eldest son went to Champlain College and he took a semester abroad to Barcelona. 
So we Skyped with him on Thanksgiving. He was doing really great. And we decided to visit him in December and then all fly home for Christmas. So we board the plane in Logan Airport. And I must say, this was the airline trip from hell. Although it was somewhat induced, we had a layover in Rome. And Rome Airport, we got there. And we had to take, I don't know, two or three shuttles to find our gate. We finally get to our gate and uh, realize that my son has left my husband's iPad on the plane. So has anybody been to the Rome, Italy airport? OK, you got to take a shuttle to get to the damn bathroom there. So anyway, he goes off with my son to this Harry Potter-like archive, this little old man behind the desk who doesn't speak a word of English. They actually retrieve the iPad. But in the meantime, my daughter and I are at the gate, and I reach into my pocket, and I go, I have my son's passport. So, you know, I know it's a bad mom thing, but this kid loses everything that's not tied down to him. So I'm safeguarding his passport. So we talk to the Italian airline staff at the gate, and then again down at customs. And they all, as soon as they see me come, and they decide they don't know a word of English. So my daughter and I go back and wait at the gate. And uh, we're waiting, and we're waiting. And they call for our plane to board. And I'm watching. And I see my husband come sprinting out of a crowd of people. I race to him, hand him the passport, and away he flies. So he does get back to custom, gets my son in with the iPad. We make our connection to Barcelona. We had a great time there. My son studied Spanish architecture and then also the nightlife. So he was a really great tour guide. And then the night before we're ready to fly home, we're checking in our flights. And my son's flight is mysteriously canceled. I don't want to recall this, but I do recall a credit card bill that I got and I disputed because I didn't think it was legit. So, OK, another bad mom move, I know. So we get to the airport about 3 in the morning, and my husband and I and other two children board our flight back to the States, to Boston. And we leave my oldest son waiting for a standby flight to New York City. We actually make it home for Christmas. So the next time that my family is not home together for the holidays, my nuclear family, is when my eldest son decides to travel to South America to explore his heritage. Little does he know that Ancestry.com will reveal years later the Italian Greek influence over the Peruvian Lopez's. <laughs> but we Skype on Thanksgiving. And um, he's been sick. My son has been sick for at least a week. He's got this stomach thing from something he ate or drank. He promises to be more careful about what he ingests. And so uh, a couple weeks later, I'm on the gondola at Whiteface, and I decide to check my email. And I have this email message that says, send help, La Paz, Bolivia. Well, I'm sure it's spam, but I decide I'll ski down and reply to it. So I do, I reply, and the sender says, send money. So I go, send a message, and it says, tell me what the name of our dog is. And the sender replies, Chloe, which was the name of our dog. So I got in touch with my husband, and together we made, um, we made arrangements to Skype with my son to make sure it was really him and not someone holding a gun to his head. Um, and later found out that when he did get into Bolivia at nighttime, traveling solo, he hailed a cab. He got in the back seat, and the official sitting next to him asked him for his credentials. When he pulled out his wallet, his wallet, his camera, and his phone were stolen, and he was shoved out the door onto the pavement. So. Um, Upon hearing this and just realizing he's OK, he's OK, very grateful for that, I plead with him to come home for Christmas. He replies in an email a couple of days later and sends me his return ticket. He's not only missed Thanksgiving, he's going to miss Christmas and also his birthday and come back in March. Ouch. So when my middle son, my middle child, decided to go to college at the University of Utah, I threatened him. I said, look, you'll never be able to make it home for the holidays again. 
because you know what, we can't afford to fly you home. Whose need was I fulfilling? <laughs> you see, the heartbreak that a mom feels when her child moves that far away is the product of the depth of her love and the strength of that bond. And I really was crushed, um, but he never did make it home again for Thanksgiving, and he's made it home every Christmas since. So I told you I would highlight a couple of values, human qualities I thought were essential to have um, a good well-being during the holidays in life. So of the qualities I mentioned in my story, um, I really think that love, forgiveness, and gratitude are those three qualities that are important for well-being. I also wanted to say that I was really surprised that my bad mom moments surfaced during the story. And I do believe that it's healthy to have some self-reflection. And I also want to say that I'm really looking forward to seeing the movie Bad Moms at Christmas because I'm hoping it'll make me feel better about myself. <laughs>